Hi guys, welcome to week two. So this week what we're going to do is we're going to talk about atomic models. So the model of the atom that we know about now wasn't always what we thought it was. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at all the different atomic models. We're going to look at Rutherford's alpha scattering experiment. And we're going to link observations from Rutherford's experiment to his model of the atom and look at the different models of the atom, as I said, how they change over time. So this is the one that we're currently familiar with. Hasn't always been like that though. So these here, these are lads, they're the ones that have gone from the basic model of an atom to the one that we believe today. Um, there is also an addition after this, Schrodinger, you've probably heard about. Um, you don't need to know about his model. You need to know about the four models here and the work that Chadwick did. Okay, so look, these are the models. So what we're going to do is we're going to describe these models. And we're also going to look at Rutherford's scattering experiment. So we start off with Dalton. So Dalton literally just thought everything was made up of atoms. There was lots of discussion at the time. What is everything made up of? Dalton thought that atoms were just indivisible spheres. He had no idea anything else. He just thought there were spheres. You cannot break them apart. That is the simplest thing. That's all you need to know about Dalton. Then Thomson came along, and Thomson had made a discovery. Thomson had discovered these things called electrons. And what he decided to do is he created this model, which I'm sure you've heard of, called plum pudding. Plum pudding is basically like a Christmas pudding. So he thought, because atoms had to be neutral, that they must have these electrons that he discovered. And electrons, as we know, they are negative. So if an atom had to be neutral, the rest of it must be positive. So he thought this whole sort of big grey circle here was a big, positive, amorphous blob, if you like. So it's a positive sphere embedded with electrons he knew electrons were negative now he wanted to prove this so well say he wanted to prove this rutherford wanted to prove this this is what physicists are doing all the time they want to check that their models are correct so they have to do experiments so rutherford came along now rutherford what he did well I say what he did rutherford was the big boss he got uh hans geiger and marsden to do his experiment for him he wanted to prove if Thomson was right or wrong. So what he said was, right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a radioactive source over here. Now this radioactive source is a source that gave out alpha radiation, something we'll come on to in a bit. But essentially, it's two protons and two neutrons. And what he did was he said, right, we're gonna fire this alpha radiation at a very, very, very thin sheet of gold. And then all the way around it, they had these detectors and his two assistants, their job was to keep an eye on these detectors and they wanted to spot what would happen because what Rutherford thought would happen was that this radiation would go into the gold and most of it, even if all of it, would just go straight through over here. He thought that this sort of positive blob might deflect it a little bit, but it was quite soft. It should just go straight through. It might be deflected a little bit. And when they started doing this experiment, they realized, yep, it's all working fine, most of them going straight through, some of them being deflected at small angles, we're good. But then, something happened they really didn't expect. That. Some nuclei, there's about one in 8,000 of them, some of these alpha radiations, sorry, they were deflected at very, very large angles, above 90 degrees, i.e. sort of here, onwards there. And he thought, right, why are they being deflected? Why are they being deflected at such a high angle? But then again, most of them are just going straight through. So what Rutherford had to do is he had to come across with a new model. And he had to link his observations to his model. So the two observations, as we said, is that most of them, near enough all of them, went straight through. Some were deflected at slight angles, but there was about one in 8,000 that were deflected at really, really high angles, above 90 degrees. So, this is what Rutherford did. Rutherford said, okay, so most of them are going, most of the alpha particles are going straight 
through. So why are they going straight through? Well, that's because there's nothing there. So what he did was he linked his observation to evidence. And he said most of them are going straight through because most of atoms, all of their mass is pretty much concentrated in one part and the rest of it is empty. And then the second bit of evidence, uh, second observation, was that some of them were deflected at high angles. Well, that must be, so 1 in 8,000 deflected at large angles. Apologies, I can't get used to this pen yet. So he said, right, most of it's empty space, so there must be something there is deflecting off. And that is this thing here, your nucleus. So he said, right, that nucleus there, that must be where most, if not all, of the mass is being concentrated. And he said, well, if we're talking about charges, we've got the electrons, they must be going around the outside. This nucleus must be positive. So we have a small, dense object in the centre that's possibly charged. That's the nucleus, and that's what's causing these alpha particles to deflect at an angle larger than 90 degrees. And then we get on to Bohr. Now, Bohr didn't do much difference. He said that there was a positive nucleus at the centre, just like Rutherford's. But what he said was that the electrons were around the outside, but they're in shells. Now in the last video, we said shells are essentially energy levels that these electrons are in. You can have a certain number of electrons in each shell, in each energy level, and they can move around as well. We'll come on to that in just a bit. So there you go, Dalton, indivisible spheres. JJ Thompson, the plum pudding model, um, where you've got a positive amorphous sort of sphere with negative electrons dotted around the inside. Rutherford, the nuclear model. He said that you've got a very small nucleus, very dense, positive, mostly atoms, empty space, and these electrons orbit. And then Bohr, we've got a nucleus again, positive, but the electrons orbit in shells. A few things to note here. We haven't mentioned one guy, Chadwick. What Chadwick then later discovered, he discovered neutrons. So he added to the model about neutrons. So yeah, this is Thompson's Plumpity model. With this one, he thought just most of them would go straight through, but look, most of it's empty space. Some are deflected at small angles because they're near this nucleus, but one in 8,000 deflected back because of that small, dense, positively charged nucleus. Now, if we go on to Bohr's model, he was talking about electrons, and he said that these electrons, what they could do is they can move up and down shells. And they can, provided they have something. So if an electron moves down a shell, what it would do, as you've just seen there, is it will give out some energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. Now, you may have heard of this word. It was called a photon, it emits. And he said the converse as well. He said that if you have electrons that actually absorb some electromagnetic radiation, what they'll do is they'll go up an energy level. And obviously, the different levels that they jump, they make a transition to, the different en uh, energy of photons they require, and the different energy of photons they will emit as well. You don't need to know about the word photon. You just need to say they absorb or emit electromagnetic radiation. And what can happen is that you can produce this thing called an emission spectrum. This thing here is caused by photons being emitted by an excited atom. Again, more chemistry than anything, you don't need to know about this, mainly just that electrons can move up and down energy levels if they either absorb or emit electromagnetic radiation or photons. Good, hope you enjoyed, hope it helps. See you later.